Everybody, welcome to Planet Sky FF. Get it right, Planet Sky FF, the show that rolls around fifty thousand pounds. My name's Serge. My name is James. Are you any closer to the fifty big ones? What this week? No, I'm on zero points. What about you? Well, this week, yeah, I'm on zero points. <laughs> I'm quite excited for this show because just before we started recording, the answer to your question is yes. By the way, I'm up to about four k. Um, just before we started recording, you told me this was going to be a very exciting podcast. I don't Correct. know why. Correct. Correct. Come on, what's that? Last week in regular FPL, yeah, I proved that I'm an FPL genius, aka FPL expert, aka FPL god, by triple captaining Trent Alexander Arnold, <laughs> um, which is uh, obviously tonight for most people listening on Wednesday gonna bear me fruit and rise me up into the top. I don't know, three hundred k. However. Any sky transfers last week? Oh my god! Having said that, the people that I would have bought in would have been uh, Mo Salah, Robertson, and VVD. Okay, yeah. It wouldn't uh, like it could have been worse. Is I suppose my point. I would have still captain Sadio Mane, which I did. Yeah. I suppose it could have been worse. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> And I've got my transfers. I'm still going to be bringing them in for the West Ham game. But... but. So you just cost yourself like a good 10 plus points for no reason. 10, 15, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Having said that, now that I've got these uh, transfers still up my sleeve, uh, I could... They could pay out better. Okay. You don't know All what's right. in the future so until it's in the future, you're, do you? You're, so you're, you're in a situation, for whatever reason, you didn't do it. Yeah. I, don't, I worry about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> it's just time on the Thursday. I'm trying to even remember what I was okay. doing last Thursday. Well, it's an interesting one. And part related to the fact we're recording on Tuesday. Um, we've had news today that Sadio Mane is absolutely definitely not going to play at West Ham United. Correct. He's got to go. Now, he will be in... Is he in your Sky Squad? He is. Yeah, he's in the majority of Sky Squads. So first debate I think that's worth having is, right, so what do we do here? For the majority of us are on Mane and probably already got the Liverpool assets that we wanted last mm -hmm. week. Yep. Is it worth doing another? Is it worth going for? I, I guess the obvious one I would say, if people haven't gone for, say, I've got all three up front. If you haven't got Firmino, get, get it Firmino. done. If I you think, haven't got Salah, get yeah. Salah. But the, other than that, I wouldn't swap him out for uh, Ox or Henderson or what have you. Well, the one for me, I guess, would be like Joe Gomez. I, just, I, I don't know if that's worth it, mate. Not for a defender. I'm still, I'm still now. Look, I'm on, I'm on but Trent think, and Mane. You think they're banker clean sheet, right? Um, I, I, okay. Depends where where you sit in this. I have I have no. I'm an evidence based person. I've watched West Ham. We have no attacking uh, potency whatsoever to break through Liverpool's defence. I've also watched West Ham enough times upset the party. Um, I would say seventy percent likely of a clean sheet. Is there a way of checking the odds to see what how likely we are to keep a clean sheet? But I just said seventy. That Liverpool are likely to keep a clean sheet. Seventy to eighty percent likely to keep a clean sheet. But it only takes one set piece. It only takes statistically in percentage wise, it won't be that high. It only takes one clumsy challenge in the box or one stupid VAR decision, and uh, a penalty gets awarded, and then before you know it, it's Noble gone. puts it in the top corner, and we win one nil. Yeah, I no, I, I <laughs> don't think I'm gonna make a transfer. I wouldn't for Gomez if you've already got three. I mean, it's around the corner to overhaul time now, isn't well, I, it? But I, no, I, I still have. Five, I think. No, it's in three at the back. Yeah, I've got the other three. Yeah, Trent, mm. Robbo. Yeah, and, for, and for the Van extra Dijk. one, I'm not sure. Who would you sell? And I've still got uh, Salah and Firmino as well. So I still began into the game Wednesday night with five. Mm. I don't know. Is it not, I, I just, not worth the risk? No, I feel like it's not. Not worth the risk, in my opinion, here. No. But Ishmael Saar will be going and I'll be getting VVD uh, because I'm going to hold VVD for a while afterwards anyway. It doesn't really make a difference because of this overhaul, but 
uh, yeah, not good. I've had a rank drop to 21k now, which is Ooh. unhealthy. But 24 transfers, uh, TV fixtures announced up until the end of March. I need to reinvigorate myself with my Excel spreadsheet and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Um, so what did you finish on for the game week? The last week? That's a very good question. 79. Oh. 79 points. I don't even know what that game week rank is, but, you know, it's crap. <laughs> yeah, it's not not great with two Liverpool fixtures. Yeah. One, three, five for myself. Um, far from 301,000. That was not good. Because this seemed to be hitting essentially or well, missing captains everywhere. But I had nice things like uh, Ricardo Pereira's 19 points over the two Leicester games before selling him. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, he did particularly well. I'm How many left points in you got, Matt Child? He's been in, walked in and out of the studio. How many points you got? 50. You ain't in this game. You got zero, pal. Yeah, you don't play Sky Fantasy Football. Wrong game. Why, why would you ask me a trick question? We should know the answer, I shouldn't you? <laughs> uh, okay. So who are your other assets other than Liverpool players currently? Uh, so in? the two City boys I have in Kevin De Bruyne and Raheem Sterling. I have now none. Uh, Raheem Sterling will be leaving mm -hmm. and back will come Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Yeah, so you're going to get him in for Sunday, are you? Yeah. Uh, I have Marcus Rashford injured, so he will possibly maybe make way. Uh, Ishmael Saar injured. He will also be making way. Um, and then Mount Madison De Bruyne, Baldock, Soonchu, Henderson. I mean, I'm left with shite by Liverpool. <laughs> Leno, who basically will now by default be my captain on Sunday for Arsenal at Burnley. Suyunku, so Mount, Countwell, Grealish. Grealish is an all right pick. Well, Suyunku is also Jack, an all right Jack pick. Jack Grealish is the only player to have had more than two Man of the Match awards in, in January. I think it's going to be a solid pick other side on the overhaul. Yeah, I think mean, Jack Grealish is as, well. is as solid as you like. For me, it'll be, uh, yeah, he'll be in my overhaul side for sure. Of course, I've got Countwell possibly injured as well mm. I wonder if that opens things up for me to make some transfers not really how many who, transfers who even, do you have in even, total now can I even get his value I'm down to 17 okay I'm just looking at that I'm wondering if, if I compare that off sort of like a Cantwell and Mane financially towards a Henderson and Vinaldum, for example mm. or, or if Fabinho is back in the team I need to look at that but it just doesn't feel worth it I think that's me stuck now for me now, the transfers I make not only have to return, but like haul as captaincy picks for me to make any ground back. Uh, so I'll be looking at my transfers will now be all about making sure that on any given day, I always have the best potential captaincy option in my team. And I'm not bothered about jumping on, jumping off players now because I've got so many. And this could be fun. How okay. many weeks are there left? We're in 25, and this runs 40 games. Essentially, it's match day 25 coming up. Yeah, yeah 42, uh, which is the last one. What's the point in game week 42 when it's blank? It's like the, it's just end up 41, surely. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe there could be mass snow in uh, late April or something. Uh, 17th of May, mate. You, you're thinking there might be snowed out, so we'll need a game we week need in 42. Game week. Yeah, funny Hi why they are. Highly unlikely, on. but I suppose it was responsible for them yeah. to put that there. So 25 to 41 is 26 uh, game weeks. Sorry, 16 game weeks. What am I talking about? After the game tonight, 140 fixtures left. Yes. And I have 24 transfers within that time period. Yes. So. What we don't know yet is how many match days, but I'll be making a transfer a day. Uh, for half of it and forgetting for the other half. <laughs> so captains for the weekend. And well, I guess first, captain for you, West Ham v Liverpool. I presume um, that's Mikel Antonio, isn't it? If if I owned him, I still I would. wouldn't. Uh, yeah, the, hi the highlight of my, uh, <laughs> the weekend uh, FA Cup fixture when Antonio came on at half time, I said to myself, oh look, Antonio's coming on and warming up. He looked just looked up to me. Is he our snowman? I was like, he's what? the snowman. <laughs> Do you remember he dressed up as a snowman oh. and he crashed his Lamborghini? Um, <laughs> so he just knows Antonio is singing, I'm walking in the air and just he loves uh, watching that video and laughing at him. So no, it won't be Antonio, the snowman. It will be Van, Van Dyke. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go VVD, keeping it safe. I, Passing tears, all the rest of it, he's going to have it. I always had the intention for this fixture that I was going to go Salah, actually. Yeah. Um, it 
my plan was always Mane for Wolves and then Salah for this. So you're going to go Salah for this, and I think I'll go Salah again on on Saturday against Southampton. I mean, so there's no choice but to go with one of the Liverpool guys. I think the way Southampton counter makes me feel like they might nick a goal up at Anfield. So Salah for both for me, and then yeah, uh, I think Salah for me on Sun- Saturday. As well. Sunday, Leno, I guess captaincy a Sunday. Sunday mate. Well, it's not necessarily, is it, if people have not scrambled everything away to Liverpool and are still sitting there with... Uh, a lot will still have Kevin De Bruyne, obviously, mm-hmm. and will have worked ways around that. Or Aguero, yeah, I quite agree. The only thing is, obviously, you won't get the City team, which makes it a little a little dangerous for Aguero. It doesn't make it dangerous for De Bruyne. I don't no, know. no. Worth saying, obviously, they play their League Cup semi-final second leg Wednesday night, so... There might be some clues from but that. But they're already, what, 3-1 up, 4-1 up or whatever? I can We're 3-1 up, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, like Aguero, De Bruyne and that didn't play against Fulham in the FA Cup of the weekend, so you do expect them probably to play against Manchester United. And then from that point, if it really doesn't help, you know where you stand for Aguero at Tottenham, if you no. run Aguero, I would say. So from that perspective, I think, yeah, probably best shout Sunday is probably Aubameyang. Yeah. I would I would go with that. Mm. Um, let's do some Twitter questions, shall we? We can. Do we want to look over... I want to talk about some players in a bit more detail this next week, but we've obviously got the March TV fixtures now. Correct. Is there anything quickly we want to kind of highlight here? I mean, the first tweets that I was getting straight away once I saw the news was Tottenham West Ham. Friday night. So it's scheduled for... Just to cover off the TV... In fact, let's go through February and just highlight, obviously... I think most of us know now the the first game week after the overhaul split over two weekends. Yep. Two fixtures first Saturday, two fixtures first Sunday. Wolves against Leicester on a Friday night. Liverpool essentially Saturday. Villa Spurs, Arsenal, Newcastle Sunday. Chelsea, Man United on the Monday. Uh, following that, there's coverage that you can get hold of on the Sundays from sort of Man United, Wolves, Arsenal. Liverpool then again on the Monday night of match day 27. Now, match day 28, Leicester are due at Norwich in Carabao Cup quarterfinals. By the time this podcast release, we'll know if Leicester are through to the final or not. If Leicester go through, just a note of caution, the game won't be played in the midweek afterwards because Leicester have now made the FA Cup fifth round, as have Norwich. So it yeah. can't go into that week. I think there's a small, small possibility that it could get played the previous night on the Thursday. Small possibility, but it's probably more likely now to end up either in 34, 37, or in theory, it could end up in any random week. It could go, for example, into after match day 29, match yep. day 30, because obviously Leicester are not in Europe. It can, in theory, go anywhere. It could even be brought forward. It's not impossible. Uh, on the Sunday, then, you've got United, City, Spurs, Arsenal, Everton, Wolves. You'll certainly have some coverage there. Liverpool play the Saturday. Now, we go into March. We've got Liverpool again on a Saturday. Sunday fixtures are Chelsea, Everton, Man United, Man City. The Monday night is Leicester against Villa. So it's another one. If that Vardy stays about with Norwich, suddenly you're now looking at three single game days for Leicester. If you Wolves, Norwich and Villa. And obviously that Norwich game might come about somewhere else as yep. well. Following Saturdays, uh, you're probably going to want some City or at home to Burnley. Leicester or at Watford. The Sunday's interest in West Ham, Wolves, Spurs, Man United. The Monday night is Everton, Liverpool. And that Sunday, obviously, with Spurs and West Ham both playing, is the Sunday before the Friday night meeting, should Tottenham not make the FA Cup quarterfinals. Yes. If you do make the quarterfinals, that game will be postponed. The game will be off and it will go into game after match day 34 or match day 37. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't advise getting... You're not going to know, unless obviously Spurs lose Southampton in the cup next midweek. But if Spurs beat Southampton, when you have to make your overall decision, you're not going to know if that game's on or off. My recommendation would be don't get any Spurs assets. And then if you want to, you can get Sun, for example, in for the Sunday against Man United, the Friday right. against West Ham. There's two captaincies and two home games Job in, done. out. Yep. By then, you might know April fixtures. It might be a case you want to hold on a bit longer yeah. possible. Yeah, uh, I'm with you on that. I, uh, we do have a question on that from uh, Sam Sky Sports FF, who was talking about it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm with you on that. Now the other games on the Saturday and the Sunday are, are kind of not really worth discussing because implications of uh, whether teams go through or not in the FA Cup. The Sunday fixtures currently scheduled 
at Leicester against Brighton against Southampton and Arsenal. It's every chance none of those none of those games will take place. Yep. So I don't think it's worth looking at that further at the moment. Which means that Sky will get screwed over because they'll have no televised football what that day. Are you I, sad about that? Or well, stick the F, it the to FA them. Cup games will be on instead, won't it? But not on Sky and they'll necessarily. Just, they'll, they'll just have the right sense to rearrange fixtures whenever they're played. Yeah. Possibly, so I yeah. don't. There's nothing that's really stuck out in March that's made you go, "Oh, I need a bit of that one." And I think in April, with the way the relegation fight is at the moment, there will be more of that potentially. Yeah. 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 But there's nothing that's come out other than kind of that debate round spares. That's kind of would I would really make people move away from I think what the pre overhaul emphasis was towards yeah you're gonna certainly want some sort of Liverpool coverage City coverage for example Liverpool and City again will cover most of it off yeah Twitter questions straightforward as that really isn't it at the moment to be um, honest yeah yeah I'm I, the fact that I missed my transfers last week three of them that I was gonna make. Uh, well, I was going to make more. Now I'm going to make less. Uh, I'm going to be really all in on first half of the overhaul, going in on the first four team, uh, four matches that are being played, okay, and tra- making transfers for the second six. Yeah, maybe two or three more than I maybe would have otherwise. So hopefully, I'm interested to see how that plays out. Let's just uh, wrap up Sam uh, Sam Sky Sports FF on Twitter's question. Uh, because you partially answered it, I'll chuck in my opinion and then there's a second part to the question as well. With Spurs and West Ham potentially playing each other in a single game day, who is the must-have player, one must-have player from each of your sides? Um, and also, do you think an avid fan of your club makes you biased towards or against any players and does it affect whether you bring them in or not? Uh, Son, I'm assuming, is your current must-have no, I think if I had to stick a Spurs player in right now and leave it for the next two months, it would probably be Aurea. But for the purposes of diving in and out for those two home games? Oh, if you're getting one in for the captaincy for the two fixtures, yeah. I think then some. some. Yeah. I'm going to... I don't... Oh, with West Ham, I don't, I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, depends on injuries at the time. Look, Antonio probably closely followed by maybe Anderson would be the two, but um, I wouldn't describe myself as an avid fan of my club. I hate them. <laughs> so I had a few messages about Tottenham, by the way. People actually really enjoyed that show. So if anyone, uh, that episode as opposed to that show. So if anyone hasn't listened to yesterday's Tottenham still disappointed uh, in our clubs. You should uh, have a listen to that. I, Are you more... Just to cut you yeah. in on that, uh, on Tottenham, I, I think a lot of the Sky players are, are possibly a little bit more tactical savvy than a lot of the FPL managers. There's some notes in there on Sun, which are really worth listening to, sure. I think. And I've dated that over the last couple of Tottenhams in terms of I've got concerns. Mm. Are, you, are you more biased pro or against your players? I'm definitely makes me more biased Neither. against... Neither. Like a, but a boxing day in FPL when I felt like I was wildcarding and I wanted to dive into Spurs good fixtures, I didn't hesitate to go into Kane and Ali. With, I was going to be Sun, but obviously Sun got suspended. Most. And now I've no hesitation to say I ain't going near them. Mm. So. I, I'm I'm very biased against. Um, they're, 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 they're like girlfriends that have cheated on me, West Ham players. You still have to go back, but you resent them. I'm not going near them. Forget what, about it. What, what, what kind of women do you know? <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever had that problem actually yet so far. But I do feel like the players let me down like a cheating partner would. Um, if anybody has that experience and also has a, a crap football team, other two experiences the same, do DM me and let me know. Uh, Laporte. This is coming in from At The Bridge Pod, a Chelsea FC podcast. Uh, and they want to know, if it's time Shout to out bring to Mickey and the guys there. Uh, is it time to bring Laporte back into our team now that he's back to fitness? I mean, he's a he's a tier point machine. Oh, like passing wise, yeah, yeah. absolute phenomenon. I think the only concern on on Laporte, and it's great coverage. So I feel like ten point three is expensive, but he walks straight back in with a, a ten pointer against Sheffield United, passing tier two, clean sheet. Kind of what you've got, and obviously with Laporte as well, he's a threat from set pieces as well, mm-hmm. it's worth saying. Whereas De Bruyne has been obviously the safe, Laporte's now is like a second almost, I think, to throw with. I suspect I will probably overhaul with a Merrick Laporte in my team. 
And there's going to be a little bit of suffering, I think, with Champions League and whatnot. But he's probably going to really make up for it when he does play, I think. Mm. He's like it's been with VVD for a number of weeks, although very oddly didn't hit the Tyrion against Wolves. He's kind of almost starting at five points. Yeah. Him for City, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, We'd highlighted it like, um, last week after the game as well. So Laporte, yeah, it's just a case of if it works for you value-wise. But then Laporte, De Bruyne, for me, psh, get on with it. If I've got clarity on sort of Aguero and that, then yeah, fine as well. FPL Foxy, uh, at Foxy FPL, best swords and shields. And how do the blanks doubles affect your overhaul strategy? I suppose we're so far out right now in terms of the overhaul um, from the blanks and doubles. And there's so many questions. Like we only know about two games from the game week 31 in FPL. I don't know what it translates to. It's a bit, it's, I don't think it's going to massively affect my overhaul strategy. I haven't tried to draft an overhaul or anything. Yeah, me and, neither. And I, I'm really honestly, I, I'm not even going to start till Sunday night. Mm. Once it's, it's, next done and it's, uh, it's next week's episode. It's next week's episode. new but, in- instinctively right now in me I'm thinking like I probably want a couple of nice little cap C coverages from teams outside Liverpool and Manchester City I want coverage for the game that I'm going to probably want an Everton or a Brighton or a Watford player for example just one it might be that's a Richarlison or a, a Calvert Lewin or it could be something defensive cheap at Brighton or Ishmael Sarr if he's fit. Yep. Something, just something yep. to tie yep. it over will be fine. But otherwise, I'm thinking strong defensively City Liverpool and then some big caps and see options elsewhere to coverage sort of like Vardy or Bamiang. And then I'm really moving around the blanks mm. and doubles. And I'd like to carry through as long through as possible. Once we got clarity on the Carabao Cup final, it's going to help as well. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll get some clarity, excuse me, I, I guess particularly around Spurs after the replay with Southampton. Mm. But I, February, March, I don't want to be making too many transfers. I feel the real power is going to be in April and early May from that perspective. And we're right at the end of the season. It'll be yeah. interesting. Um, let's rattle through a couple of quick questions. Uh, Tartan Espanyol, is there any chance Edison will actually take penalties? Yeah. You think he will? No, I don't think he will, but the chance, yes. Okay. Yeah, we covered that on last Friday's Planet FPL main podcast Yeah. when we were doing our run-through of the games. And, and I said it was mentioned a couple of years ago and it was seen as a bit disrespectful, I think, because they'd already won the league. Yeah. Whereas now I just think it would be, well, he'd be the best penalty taker and get on with it. I think for it to happen, you'd need to have no Aguero, no Gundogan on the pitch. Mm. So that's that's the first point. You'd have to get neither of them two on the pitch first. Yeah. I don't think it's impossible. Okay. Um, this These two questions we're going to skip, but I'm going to read them out anyway because... Uh, were, were they bad? No, it's uh, around the overhaul. So you've got Joe Finley, Bader, best formation for the overhaul, and you've got Tartan Espanyol. Is five at the back going to become a realistic option with like Reese James, Bulldog, Suyung Chu all gathering similar points to high-priced uh, midfielders, I feel like next week is a real overhaul special. And like you said, you haven't really started planning your overhaul strategy and, and won't until Sunday. Um, I, I would say that, yeah, but more defensive players is not out of my thoughts for the overhaul um, because of the value that they could potentially offer. I mean, I'll definitely have two Liverpool defenders, for example, uh, and Laporte. And Pereira's looking tasty as well. So um, it's not out of my thoughts. And playing more defenders is not out of my thoughts. But it's not front of my mind at the moment. I yeah, don't know if you have anything every, to add. Every chance for me, I think that I could end up with five. And it could be pretty strong. I'm thinking sort of TAA, VVD, Laporte, Pereira, Sionku, something like that. Mm. But then, for example, if City, Leicester is going to be the League Cup final... Suddenly, I'm losing three players that game week already. It's the sort of things I'd, I'm relaxed in my mind about and I need to think about once it's confirmed. Yeah. Uh, and Benny Blanco as well. Benny underscore Blanco 40. Benny, thank you for your question. Uh, how do we best navigate the weird looking winter break schedule? And he says in brackets, pen and paper ready. <laughs> I think you're going to get two very different approaches here to the winter break schedule. You're um, going for it, aren't you? That I'm first going weekend. for a four four six split strategy. 
uh, with maybe four or five transfers. Sorry, a what split? Clarify four, that. six split. Four, four games in the first week, six in the second, and uh, five transfers in the middle. I'm just calling it the four, six split. Oh, right. Okay. I'm yeah. inventing uh, strategies here. So you want to get are five at, players in for one game, transfer them out straight out. Is that what you're saying? Uh, maybe. Like okay. I said, I haven't really looked at it. But yeah, I will I will uh, maybe make three or four more transfers, yeah, in that in- intervening gap um, when once I've had a good look at it. It'll, I, be, a, it'll I, be a real gamble. I think I'll be De Bruyne, pl- possibly plus Laporte, Henderson, cheap goalkeeper, gives you Sheffield United coverage for good runs of fixtures, plus one from the four teams playing on the Saturday. I think that's all I'll be from that first weekend. Mm. Um, any this is coming in from Lee Williams at SkyFF underscore Cumre Cumreig, which is not the Welsh spelling of Cumru, but I don't know. Uh, tell us where Cumreig is, uh, Lee. Do do that. Uh, Cumreig. Any, yes. Any players worth considering for the Chelsea Man United game? I had Mason Mount, and I still have Mason Mount. I don't really want to keep him post overhaul. I think I found the answer to this. Marcus Rashford will be back from injury. <laughs> no, he won't be. Oh, shame. Hold on to your hats. I found something. One of the problems with that is you, it's the sort of fix you, you're going to want some coverage from. And because it's Chelsea slash Man United. Yeah. Um, potentially players that you may want to hold for a little bit longer as well. Now, in terms of the power players, obviously with Rashford's injury, we don't know on Abraham's injury status at the moment, although he's obviously very cheap in this game. And unreliability on both teams in defensive areas, as much yeah. as you can say Reese James and the like. We, I mean, as Piliquet is the only one really at Chelsea's absolutely nailed on safe. We don't really know. We're sort of like, like Brandon Williams is dirt cheap. Is, is he going to get the shirt over Luke Shaw? That would be interesting if I don't know if we knew between now and overhaul Luke Shaw was going to be out for six weeks or so. I think yeah. he'd go, yeah, fine, I'd stick Brandon Williams in. Where we're trying to cut the corners is in midfield, isn't it? I think you're right, yeah. Yeah, and if is there someone from these two teams looking at it that I can just throw in there and leave in there? And it might be Fred. I had a look at... Still 7.9 million. 7.9, yeah. But I had a look at his performances because obviously he played very well in the two fixtures against Tottenham and Manchester City in early December, which pricked people's attention. And in my opinion, what I've seen since, he hasn't been playing very well. But here's his point scores since those two fixtures. Five, 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 four, five, five, four, seven. Consistent, if not explosive. So that's fine at that price. I agree with you that. If I said you now in that fixture, you can get 10 points off Fred. I'd be well happy with that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. He's picking up passing tiers, tackle tiers. And in fact, the only game where he didn't, which was the Burnley away fixture, he actually got awarded man of the match. I was too pissed from watching Spurs against Norwich to remember that. Even at Liverpool, we had tackle tier. There's some passing tiers like Norwich, Arsenal. He's actually getting a little mixture of tiers. He hasn't hit two together yet. Yeah. There's a possibility even passing and tackle tiers is possibly on for Fred. Seems no sign of Pogba coming back into that team anytime soon. McTominay's injured as well. Place looks very secure. At 7.9, that might be the way I go. Okay. A uh, couple of other questions then. Let's wrap them up. Uh, what the FP hell? Uh, what guy? What, you guys still have plenty of transfers left, and we do. Will you be relying on these to lift you up the ranks for the rearranged fixtures, or will you be approaching the overhaul looking for one or two differentials? And who is in your thoughts? No one's in my thoughts. Yeah, because I don't know what's happening with the doubles yet. Blanks. I don't want to leave myself in a position where, like I said, I'd have a. If the match day twenty eight final ends up being City and Leicester. And they're playing each other the week before. I'm not sure I want to therefore overhaul with four Leicester and Man City between them. I'm probably going to cut the corners and go cheaper. I might be that I'll cut off Leicester until after the League Cup final, for example. There's a few different ways of going there. Doubles-wise, I mean, look how many big teams are still in the FA Cup. That can go... So many. That can go a number of ways. But as as we were saying on our live stream on Monday night, like they're midweek fixtures... There's certain teams where, say, like Arsenal with the Europa League back up and running, how strong do they go at Portsmouth? Be a very different atmosphere to how it was at Bournemouth. Now, obviously, yeah. you expect Arsenal to go through, but suddenly it might switch. And then suddenly, in that match day 31, Southampton and Arsenal might be on. Yep. So 
in terms, I think you just got to be prepared to know that your situation and your circumstance really could change throughout this. I think the only absolute key for me is got to have Liverpool, got to have City with the way that the fixtures are breaking down so far. And that's going to cover off a lot of the captaincy. Even if, like I said, that means going and say 5-3-2 and your front two being Vardy and Aubameyang and you've got Laporte and Van Dijk, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm, honestly, headspace-wise, I'm quite free about it until until Sunday. Mm. Um, FPO Achilles, is it worth using a valuable transfer just to bring in a captain for Sunday this week? I don't think so. I'm happy just to go Leno. I suppose when you say valuable Len, transfer, Len, you have gonna, more than, say, 15, 16, probably. Leno's you have less, probably either no? going to get me four points or 18 points, isn't he? Uh, no, he's going to get you four, <laughs> let's be honest. Well, as a Spurs fan, I hope he's like none. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it will do. Yeah. I think... I'm going to be using one, but I've got 24 transfers left. James has got 17. I think, I not. think in Suja's position, 24... Definitely get one. Anything in. over 18, 19 transfers, maybe get a Definitely get in. one in, and I think the recommendation would be Aubameyang. Aubameyang. I'm going to hold Aubameyang But off, I think so. probably less than 15 is where I'd say no. Yeah. That would be, and I don't know if that's right, but that, that would be my thinking. I'll tell you what I have began to think in the last couple of weeks is, and it kind of comes back to our friend uh, Anoop, uh, Foxy FPL's question about um, shields and differentials and that. My belief in terms of holding the transfers back and having the, the advantage later on because how I'll be able to manoeuvre blanks and doubles. Again, we're not going to know if that works till the end or not, right? But I think in hindsight, looking back on it and how template the game becomes, I can see why the guys hammer in early, mm -hmm. the experienced guys, to get ahead and then other people have got to make the manoeuvres to then get ahead of you. I can see that. And it makes it gritty teeth and you got to make sacrifices later on. But actually, yeah, it's something it, I'll review it, at the um, end of the season. It, You've just segued very nicely into. into the final question. Go on. Which is from Steve-O, our friend at Elite FPL, Steve-O. Hello, mate. He says, this is genuinely one of my favourite episodes you do in a week, despite not playing Sky FF. What a guy. Um, but during the weeks that you have been playing this, what's the one thing you've learned to do exceptionally well to say get top 100 at this stage, let alone end the season rank? Well, firstly, neither of us are top 100, but I no, think it's, it's just what have we learned here? Um, pick your team, make your transfers, yeah, set I mean, your captain. Forget the basics there, yeah. But it's actually a very valid point. For me, Steve, I had a period where I was doing particularly well, um, where I rose up the ranks when I put my spreadsheet together and planned and then over like life gets in the way right especially with a game like this when you've got midweek three midweek fixtures like last week it's like oh, whatever um, Mrs. like right I need to go out tonight because I'm going to a yoga class you've got to get the kids to bed I'm like yeah cool fine one of them doesn't go to sleep and fucking so like, kicking off next thing you know deadline's gone you're like done it's plan four or five weeks in advance and stick to, like if nothing else stick to the plan so things will change inevitably players get injured and they don't but if you have a plan if in doubt and you've not had time to think about anything else other than injury just do what you said you would do in the plan because if i'd have done that just that i'd be at least 20 30 points better off now than i am and also log in every day <laughs> log in every day to check your captains and all the rest of it yeah i think for me and write a shitty email to the guys that built the app to get a bit better. <laughs> a little bit like what I, I said in the, uh, previously a couple of minutes ago in terms of maybe being more aggressive at the at the start of the season. But I think starting the game new and my idea of getting to a first overhaul with no transfers and then reassessing my position wasn't the worst thing to do when I didn't I didn't know if what I was playing doing. the game correctly. No, of course, it's true. of course. Like, you can have a knowledge of football, you can have a knowledge of fantasy games. This setup is completely different. And I'd still win, it's going to be February in a couple, of, a couple of days. Don't really know if I'm doing that good or not. But I do have a, a target. I'm at just over 4K. And I would love for a first season finish to top finish thousand. in the top thousand. And I think it's doable. Yeah. Based on the transfers you have left, more than doable, mate. More than There hasn't doable. been um, someone sent the, this sport in life or whatever, released the transfer stats again. Yeah. There hasn't been a lot of movement on that in the last couple of weeks. A lot of dead teams, do you think? Possibly. 
possibly. It's certainly some who are doing really well that are definitely dead. Who yeah. you saw like but teams, how? teams right then, near the top would say only one Liverpool player last Thursday and that kind of thing. Yeah, but um, if you don't set your captain, it's not a set and forget captaincy. So I don't, I don't see how dead teams can continue. Like in FPL, at least your captain's set every week. If you go dead in Sky... You're, you don't have a captain most I think you're relying on days. chance if the game picks someone for you or doesn't. Seems yeah, to be how it works. Which I is don't mad, know. isn't it? Yeah. Anyhow. Um, that was all the questions we got through. And we overrun from our 30-minute show, but I, five minutes I is did right. have one um, from someone uh, at the weekend. Are Sky players um, welcome to the Planet FPL live event in February? The answer to that question is 100% yes, absolutely. Please come along. It will be obviously anyone with a pulse and seven pound fifty is welcome to the event. We're not going to lie; it will be more FPL themed. But in terms yes. of our coverage during the podcast of what's going on, it's going to be covering the football, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. There will it's, a, be, it's a day of football more than a day of. There FPL will be as well, a lot so. of guys there who are playing Sky, um, and we'll certainly have a Sky chat at some point. Mm, uh, I think uh, it's a good thing to chuck in. Maybe uh, when we look at the quiz. That, that might make it a little more interesting for people. Or to put a Sky question in. Or that's two. The, that's a bit naughty, I think. No, nah, I think it'll be it'll be a good comparison to say who's a player X, Y, Z. More points in Sky or more points in FPL? But I think you'll be surprised how many FPL players do play Sky. I think the vast majority are having a little dabble. In the UK, I think you'd be surprised. In the UK, I think the amount of people still saying. I mean, you've seen like Steve O there saying, yeah, yeah. "Like the pod, I'm not playing." Yeah. I mean, Steve O, have a go next year. I told me mate Ricky Saunders, like, play the game, mate. Yeah. Get on with it. Definitely. The one worth thing it. we're doing, and I guess you know, it's us and and Hub and and others who are really focusing on the game at the moment. Um, is it's raising the profile a little bit, so people who yeah. maybe. Who, I don't know, only listen to us or have only started listening to the Hub podcast, for example, and now think, oh, what's this game? I'm interested. And there, I think there is a feeling amongst the more experienced players that this Sky season has been very difficult. Now, we've got but the same, we, same could be said for well, FPL, yeah. right? Well, I think the Premier League this season, bar Liverpool, has been very un- unpredictable, right? And, mm-hmm. and that's not going to help in terms of a game where you need such structure and planning. But I think one of the reasons the pla- the, the experts, if I can, <laughs> sorry to use that word, Sage. <laughs> <laughs> the more experienced Sky players are finding Experts. it more difficult is because there's more good bloody players playing as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, and that's going to continue. Yeah. There'll be there'll be a lot of good FPL players who will be making that transition across as well. I yes. think. Um, yeah, not just me, you and me. I think with the focus within the FPL community of Sky Podcast now, yeah, there's going to be more good players next year as well. Mm, for sure. Right. Just on cue. The battery in the iPad is dead, oh, which right. means uh, we need to wrap up We're done. this show. Guys, thank you for tuning in to uh, Planet Sky FF, our weekly look at Sky Fantasy Football. Uh, tune in tomorrow for Clash of the Correspondents. We have Cy, uh, FPL underscore footballer, who's our Newcastle correspondent. And we have Mark, uh, FPL Badger. Has he got an underscore? He's at FPL underscore Underscore. Badger. He's got an underscore in there as well. I'm going to put an underscore in my handle just because All I the Sky underscore. listeners just went, Newcastle, Norwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two teams have probably had the least coverage on Skypods this year, I'd say. Uh, wouldn't surprise me, to be honest yeah. with you, if you're right with that. Um, so do stay tuned for that and all the rest of the FPL content we have coming at you. Thank you for tuning in. Ciao for now. Good luck, everyone. Q Music, man, child. <laughs> Let's go, 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 let's go